imagine a future, and our imaginings horrify us. In the case of this film, I wrote the script in the first person. It's the only time I've done that. It made it clear to anyone who read the script that we're on this ride with Oppenheimer. It was very unusual. It took me a minute to actually comprehend. And then I realized, uh, oh, that's a huge responsibility. <laughs> I don't know if we can be trusted, but I know the Nazis can't. Gillian playing Oppenheimer was the centerpiece of the film, but I knew that he was going to need the most extraordinary ensemble around him. Let's go recruit some scientists. If Chris Nolan calls you and says that he'd like to meet with you, you're like, I don't care what it is. You'd be mad to say no. <laughs> um, and uh, I, yeah, I feel like that's probably everybody's answer with this. From the second I read the script, I knew that he had a very acute vision. And if he were able to render that vision, that this film would be a masterpiece. All America's industrial might and scientific innovation connected here. Keep everyone there until it's done. It feels to me like every single character is significant because they're all historical figures of consequence. There's a chance when we push that button, we destroy the world. Chances are near zero. I tried to familiarize myself with Groves and the history, and then talk to Chris about what he needed from that part. Groves was almost like a kindergarten teacher in some respects because these scientists were so eccentric and not necessarily trustworthy. I mean, if you're looking from a military perspective. Why would we go to the middle of nowhere for who knows how long? Why? How about because this is the most important thing that ever happened in the history of the world? I was aware of who Louis Strauss was. I came to have a pretty even-handed understanding of him. He was a righteous guy. I think he was a great public servant, but he's always behind the scenes. I've always appreciated the people who are backstage. Truman needs to know what's next. What's next? With Kitty Oppenheimer, what I really was drawn to is she refused to conform to the sort of feminine ideal of the time. She had this defiance against the system that felt so modern. Jean Tatlock was blunt, knew what she wants, but at no point is she ever punished for that, um, and especially not by Oppenheimer. Theory will take you only so far. Oppenheimer sees things in sort of different dimensions. Physicists operate on a completely different level than we do, and I think sometimes it's a burden. So I was really interested in that. What we were looking for was a remarkably centered performance, the heart of the film, but also an ensemble piece. I was there on set every day, surrounded by a team of actors who knew more than I did about what was going on from their point of view. And that's what you're really looking for as a director. It's a profoundly moving and overwhelming experience watching it. Because you feel so compelled to watch what's happening with these people and how they're drawn into the biggest of moral dilemmas and what they're wrestling with, all of the characters. With the sound design and the score and the emotionality of it, this is not a film, this is an experience. When I saw it in its finished form, I was kind of like, wow. Yeah, that's what we were hoping this could be. The world will remember this day.